Hello friends. Welcome to the studio. It's a bit of a gray day today. I think we might get some rain in a moment, but the light's still pretty good. And I wanted to share with you today an art project inspired by an artist who was working on this, oh, maybe a hundred years ago. His name was Max Ernst, and he called this art form frottage, but you might call it rubbings. There are lots of examples of rubbings in art from all over the world. In China, people will make rubbings of things made of metal or stone as a way of recording their decoration to study later. And in England, especially in the Victorian times, people would go to churches and in some of the churches on the floor were metal plaques called monumental brasses. And they often had pictures of people and animals on them. And people would place paper over the brasses and make rubbings of the pictures. In fact, I've done that myself at school as a special activity. And in Japan, there's a tradition of art called gyotaku, where you actually put paper on top of fish that you really have caught out of the river or out of the ocean. And you make a rubbing of the fish's body and all of the details of its body. But we don't need to go fishing and we don't need to leave our homes to do frottage like Max Ernst. In fact, I'll tell you the story. So he apparently was staying somewhere and he wasn't sure what to do for an art project. And he noticed that the floor was a very old wooden floor and it had been cleaned and scrubbed so much that there was a really interesting pattern and texture in the floor. So what he did was he put his paper on the floor and he rubbed his pencil over the wood and then he would look at the rubbings and look for pictures and ideas in the rubbings that he made. And he made a whole series of pictures about a magical forest where some mysterious bird people lived. And he put all the pictures he made from rubbing on the floor into a book. I went around my home looking for things to rub. And the first thing I did was looked for all the things in my home made of wood, like Max Ernst did. So on this paper, all these different green rubbings are all from different kinds of wood that I found in my home, mostly right here in my studio. Then I started thinking more and I went around the whole place looking for surfaces to make rubbings as well as objects to make the rubbings. So I uh, made some labels here on my paper, but I think you can guess what this black rubbing here came from. This black rubbing here in the picture is actually some of this packing paper. And this purple rectangle right here is this side of the Lego. Can you see the other side of the Lego in my picture? I rubbed things that had circular bases or circular shapes and I got circles in my picture. And right here, I actually went by the front door where we keep our shoes and I took rubbings of the soles of our shoes. And just like Max Ernst, I did all my rubbings on one piece of paper using different colors and layering new rubbings over old rubbings. So in fact, the only thing you can see here that you need for this project is a clean piece of drawing paper, like this eight and a half by 11 copy paper. You don't want any paper that's too heavy because you want to be able to feel the things that you're rubbing through the paper. And you need some crayons with the wrappers taken off. These other objects that I put here for you 
are so that I can show you how I made the rubbings. So if I take this piece of packing paper, put it under my drawing paper, with something like the packing paper that is very soft and delicate, you want to be gentle with your rubbing so you don't smush it flat. With something made of metal that's more sturdy, you can push down with your crayon a little more Of course, with something like this hole puncher, I have to be careful that I don't move my paper while I'm rubbing, because that will make the rubbing look blurry. I know you want to know what the Lego looks like. Let's do the Lego now. There's the top of the Lego. And there's the bottom of the Lego. There's a roll of tape. You can use any colors you like in your rubbing but a nice way to finish is do your last rubbings with black. The black things are going to stand out the most. And so anything you rub with black will go right on top of any other color. Something that would be interesting to do would be to pick out black and then pick out a family of colors. If you look at the color wheel, you know that red and purple are close to each other on the color wheel. And so is red and orange. So using a family of colors, would be fun to do. You could do blue and purple. You can certainly try using yellows in your rubbing, but I found that yellow rubbings are really hard to see on white paper. The last thing I want to show you before you go off and have an adventure looking for art treasure is this rubbing I made. I was thinking about how Max Ernst would make pictures from his rubbings. And so I thought about what I could rub and how I could place the rubbings on my paper to make a picture. Can you tell what things I used? They're all here on the table somewhere. So I'll give you a moment to think about that. All right, here's the answer. And the sky rubbing was made just by rubbing my blue crayon on the tabletop right here. All right, my friends, I hope you enjoy yourself looking for things that have textures that you can capture with crayon on your paper, frottage, Max Ernst would call it. And if you enjoy that, try a new challenge and try to use those textures that you found and put them together to make a picture of something. Something maybe that you see or something that you've imagined. Have fun. I'll see you next time.